done it so many times. <laughs> Hi guys, it is a dark and rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York, where we have somehow made it to Saturday, June 27th, 2020, so I'm a day late on my Friday Ran. Oh, yeah, yeah, by the way, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and this is little my little co-pilot. Sancho Ponds are bringing you what's normally our Friday rant, so I'm in a little bit of a quandary. You know, I said that I'm not going to do videos <clears throat> as long as the top ten stories on the planet are about how many people are dying of the corona panic. So, I've been wondering, is it since they're no longer talking about the distraction from the distraction, do I need to shut down Collapse Chronicles again? But you might have noticed this subtle shift. They are no longer talking about how many people are dying of the corona panic. Now they very subtly shifted to how many people 35 and under are getting, for, for the ones that even know they ever had it, are getting a cough for a few days. And so now it's become, you need to wear your, they're guilt tripping uh, everybody pretty much under the age of 50 into wearing these ridiculous masks to save the life of old farts like me. So I just want you to know if you are under 30, and they're except for one article that I have ever found mentioning that a total of 850, 850 people in this country of 30, 334 million people, 850 under the age of 35 have ever died of coronavirus. So uh, if you were under 35, do not wear that mask on my account. Okay, you can go ahead and kill me with your little coronavirus coming out from your maskless face. I encourage everybody, but particularly those under 35, to get rid of the mask. So anyway, this is just a long way of saying, since they are no longer talking about on the mainstream media about how many people are dying of this virus, I can go right on about the Collapse Chronicles with or without the uh, talking about the <clears throat> Corona Panic Chronicles. And since this is Friday, we are going to go over to mongabay.com for the environmental, the ecological collapse roundup of the week, which is a mixed bag. They throw in a few Corona Panic stories. So with or without help from the corona panic. <clears throat> this is how the world is collapsing this week. I love it when they start out, when Manga Bay starts out with a headline asking a question, the consultant, why did a palm oil conglomerate pay $22 million to an unnamed expert in Papua New Guinea. Take a wild guess why a palm oil conglomerate paid $22 million to an unnamed expert. Yes, this, uh, anyway, I think we know the answer to that question. Well, let's move from New Guinea <clears throat> to Brazil. <coughs> huh. <clears throat> Betting on impunity, Brazilian Amazon under attack despite logging crackdown. You might have heard this uh, hilarious story that the government of Brazil, you, you know, which is 
the reason why we're seeing the biggest explosion of uh, deforestation in Brazil in decades <clears throat> cracking down. Here is what a Brazilian government cracked down on illegal logging looks like in the real world. <clears throat> in mid-May, government agents raided 700 hectares, that's about 1,700 acres of land being deforested illegally in Mato Grosso. However, local sources say that deforestation resumed shortly after the intervention. Yes, and uh, satellite imagery shows tree cover loss continuing after this crackdown, this BS crackdown on illegal logging is this is just this latest laughable greenwashing uh, cover story. They go and they, they stage this for the cameras and then their buddies go right on. Uh, <clears throat> The affected area lies right across the river from the Wawi indigenous territory. I bet. Uh, <clears throat> Brazil's Ministry of Defense touted what it described as the extensive results of the Brazilian government's crackdowns around the Amazon last month. However, Critics say occasional interventions like the May Raid are not an effective deterrent against illegal logging and that the Bozo Nero government's stripping of environmental protections is making it easier for loggers to continue deforesting. Okay, as long as we're down there talking about Bozo Nero, wow. Illegal farms on indigenous lands get whitewashed under Bozo Nero administration. An exclusive study shows that 114 properties have been certified, meaning have, uh, that these private uh, planet-eating corporations have gotten certified title to 114 properties at least inside indigenous territories in the Brazilian Amazon uh, spurred in large part by a recent law that leaves these reserves unprotected from such illegal land grabs. These certified lands, again, these lands being land grabbed by these planet eaters span more than 250,000 hectares, otherwise known as 620,000 acres inside indigenous territories. Yes, landowners have already registered claims for more than 2,000 private property holdings inside indigenous areas in the Amazon, including those home to isolated peoples. There you go. Do you think so? Did you realize that June 22nd was World Rainforest Day? Yes, World Rainforest Day. I wonder how many thousands of acres of the world's rainforest were logged, bulldozed, burned. Ugh, Jesus. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Despite the importance of primary tropical rainforest, deforestation in the world's tropical forest has remained persistently high since the 1980s. Primary tropical forests have been destroyed at an average rate of 3.2 
million hectares, that is about 8 million acres somewhere around, between 7 and 8 million acres of primary tropical rainforest have been destroyed each year since 2002. And of course, that is uh, skyrocketing all over the planet. That number from uh, primary rainforest to mangroves. <clears throat> Mangrove collapse inevitable unless emissions are curbed. If carbon dioxide emissions are not reduced, mangroves will be unable to keep up with the resulting rise in sea levels and they could start drowning by 2050, according to new study in the journal Science. Uh, anybody who thinks that it is going to take to the year 2050 to see mangroves drowning, I suggest you go down to Everglades National Park in the year 2020 in the good old U.S. of A. and you will see mangroves drowning by sea level rise. Uh, claiming that uh, this is going to start in 2050. Yeah, and if emissions are not curbed, how many uh, times have we... It makes no difference at this point. We can reduce emissions to zero starting today, and this will not change. This fact, one iota, the mangrove forest on this planet, like the Amazon rainforest, are toast. They are heading directly down the toilet. And then from there to British Columbia, we're going to return to this story in a minute. Only 1% of British Columbia's old growth forests remain. Uh, as I say, we'll get back to that story in just a minute. Um, let's go over to Madagascar for a little bit of Corona Panic reality check. Again, you know, Manga Bay on its lonely vigil pointing out that the Corona Panic is not a good thing for our fellow Earthlings. Although I got it, I have to say, I. I have to give some credit to NPR two days ago uh, doing an excellent story uh, interviewing, you know, these biologists talking about how the economic lockdowns from the corona panic are just rolling out the red carpet to uh, planet eaters and in this case Planet Nibblers, we're going to go over to Madagascar for this Corona Panic reality check. <clears throat> In Madagascar's forest, Corona Panic sparks an intense early fire season. Though Madagascar officially has just under 1,800 reported infections, and a total of 16 deaths in the entire country from coronavirus, the pandemic's socioeconomic effects will be catastrophic for the country, the UN has warned. Just one tangible impact has been the fire season, which has started early and is likely to be fiercer this year, as rural residents deprived of tourism revenue, employment opportunities, and access to food markets turn to the forest to survive. Uh, can you say Bill Gatey? Uh, this guy I interviewed, uh, you know, talking about it is going to be an economic crisis that is going to set off the sixth mass extinction, the final leg of the sixth mass extinction, when people 
are not allowed to work or to, to go to the store and buy food or, or, or make money to buy food, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to head out into the woods. They're going to eat every one of our fellow earthlings, uh, burn down the forest, you know, to plant gardens and for firewood and blah, blah, blah. The Environment Ministry has registered 52,000 52,000 forest fires in Madagascar since January, with the western flank of the country being the worst affected. A reduction in environmental organizations and state agencies' field activities, otherwise known as rangers, has made forest patrols more challenging you know, during the economic shutdowns and has affected the critical task of creating fire breaks. So this is how you can thank the economic lockdowns. Uh, these BS economic lockdowns. 16 people have died of this and 52,000 wildfires in Madagascar, can you say throw the lemur on the barbecue? Because I am not allowed to make money and, and, and buy food. I'm going to eat that lemur next door. And you take this story and you multiply it times 10 million all over this planet. Thank you, Manga Bay, for pointing this out. Thank you, Bill Gaty for pointing this out. <clears throat> okay, right here in Manga Bay, although I have been skipping over the story because it is unadulterated horse pucky uh, about China banning pangolin scale imports. China taking this tough stance, you know, in uh, Manga Bay cheering on China banning pangolin scales, but here we go. The reason I have not covered this story, did China really ban the pangolin trade? Not quite, investigators say. Investigators have cast doubt on a recent announcement by the government that China has banned pangolin scales in traditional Chinese medicines based on the discovery that pangolin scales are still in the ingredients list of various medicines cataloged in China's 2020 pharmacopoeia. Yes, uh, experts say pangolin scales are still being legally traded in China based on a loophole in the country's wildlife protection law. Yes, the Chinese wildlife protection law, that's kind of like the Sancho Panza chipmunk protection law. Okay. All right, the world's top taper expert is heading to the Amazon to uh, see what the future looks like for the tapers, South America's largest mammal uh, in the Amazon uh, as the species reacts, reacts to deforestation of its habitat driven by mining, large-scale agriculture, and logging. And of course, one of the big threats to the taper and every other animal in Latin America, China and European Union appetite for soy drives Brazilian deforestation and climate change. A recent study highlights how demand for Brazilian soybeans 
by Europe and China is stoking deforestation, thereby increasing carbon emissions, especially in Brazil's Cerrado Savanna and the Amazon rainforest. Yes. China was the world's largest importer of Brazilian soy from 2010 to 2015 and responsible for 51% of associated carbon dioxide emissions with the European Union responsible for about 30%. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I don't know how the U.S. Uh, was never mentioned in that story. Okay, and I'm just skipping over a lot of this stuff. Not worth insulting my intelligence or yours. <clears throat> Indonesian court jails indigenous farmers from for stealing from land they claim. Yeah, stealing from your own land. I can't believe they were only thrown in jail instead of just killed. Okay, so now we're going to go back up to <clears throat> British Columbia. Anybody who thinks that uh, it is only the Amazon rainforest heading down the toilet, the British Columbian rainforest is already down the toilet. British Columbia poised to lose the white rhino of old growth forest. <clears throat> In the public's imagination, British Columbia is swathed in green and famous for its towering old growth forest. But while the provincial government claims 23% of BC's standing forest are still old growth, a new study finds, in fact, that a mere 1%, 1% of British Columbia still remains, uh, you know, with tall trees. So 99% of British Columbia's old growth, and these are pretty much rainforests also, uh, 99% have already been bulldozed and take a wild guess. Now the planet eaters are looking at the final 1%. Intense pressure is now being put on the few remaining trees by a forest industry eager to capitalize on nations desperate for new carbon neutral sources of energy, including uh, you know, the revamping of coal-fired power plants over to burn wood pellets. If you have seen Planet of the Humans, uh, Planet of the Humans goes into this a whole lot about this absolute BS being promulgated by the UN Sustainable Development Goals, claiming, I guess in this case, that cutting down 1,000-year-old uh, old-growth trees in British Columbia, pulverizing them into wood pellets uh, to burn in these power plants is a sustainable use of the planet. Uh, you can find out uh, more about that. Uh, but <clears throat> while the UN says burning biomass in the form of wood pellets is carbon neutral, 10 years worth of new data says that burning trees to make electricity could help put the planet on a glide path, on a glide path to climate catastrophe. That is exactly, is there anybody believing one, in one word of the UN Sustainable Development Goals? You know, I think it was Derek Jensen or someone he was interviewing back in the 1990s 
claiming, you know, before the 21st century got here, that the term sustainable development, look out for that one, it will be the oxymoron of the 21st century. There is no such thing as sustainable development. The two words do not belong together. They cancel each other out. Anyway, enough of the UN Sustainable Development Goals taking down the last 1% of British Columbia's big trees. Okay. <clears throat> Would you like mercury with that? Shark fins served with illegal doses of heavy metals. A new study has found that most processed shark fins have mercury and methylmercury levels five to ten times higher than the legal maximum. The research team tested shark fins for nine of the common most common species used in shark fin soup. Good Lord. All right. You will not believe this. <clears throat> Palm oil from Indonesian grower that burned the forest is still being sold. Wow. An investigation by the Rainforest Action Network shows that palm oil from this Sumatra-owned planet-eating palm oil company entered the global supply chain and may have ended up in products made by Nestle and Mars Candy Company. The company was largely blackballed by buyers with sustainability commitments after a fire on its concession burned 1,000 hectares, otherwise known as 2,500 acres of pristine lowland rainforest that is home to critically endangered Sumatran orangutans. Yes, but an oversight, an oversight in the second half of 2019 led to the palm oil being bought by another uh, planet eater that supplies palm oil to commodity giant Cargill, which is uh, just down the road. I noticed that I just got an ad that Cargill is hiring a, uh, I got an email from Cargill saying they're hiring a new mining engineer and I guess they thought that Sam Mitchell might be interested in applying for the job to be a mining engineer for Cargill. What do you think? Cargill in turns sells the palm oil to multinational brands including Nestle and Mars. Now this one of course you have to dig a little deeper. Uh, Indonesia's 300 million dollar geothermal play risks being undercut by cheap coal. So first, what you have to do is buy into the myth that geothermal is going to be the way to save the planet. Now, geothermal isn't quite as bad as the sustainable option of burning trees or hydroelectric, but uh, you better believe that geothermal uh, talk to the people in Colorado that I've reported on uh, about how geothermal, but putting aside that and, and actually believing that geothermal is any better than burning coal, 
Indonesia's geothermal play risk being undercut by cheap coal. Yes, the Asian Development Bank. There you go. That sounds like someone who is really con concerned about the sustainability of the planet. The Asian Development Bank has granted this Indonesian power developer a $300 million loan to expand geothermal plants, but the plants will be supplying a grid that is already 40% over capacity thanks to a glut of cheap power from coal-fired power plants. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Clean energy observers also say the expansion of the geothermal plants carries its own risk of environmental damage, including land subsidence from groundwater extraction and deforestation to build new wells. Uh, Indonesia plans to generate 23% of its electricity from renewables by 2025, but growth in renewables, if you believe that geothermal is a uh, save the planet alternative, growth in renewables <coughs> is far outstripped by existing and new coal-fired power plants, 10 of which came, on <coughs> came online last year <coughs> alone. Anyway, this <coughs> dry cough is breaking me up. <coughs> God damn it. I guess there's no water in that jar. Anyway, how many more? Okay, we just got one more. I <clears throat> think I can get through this. This is about Rafiki the gorilla. We have a uh, <clears throat> we have a uh, a eulogy for Rafiki, the uh, the silverback gorilla. It looks like the unseen hand is offering me a uh, <clears throat> okay. We can kiss goodbye to close out this week's uh, ecological collapse with a eulogy for. Rafiki the silverback gorilla who was killed by corona panic and not by the virus. This is corona panic killing the beloved Rafiki. <clears throat> Rafiki's trust was betrayed. In early June, rangers discovered the mutilated body of Rafiki an endangered silverback mountain gorilla living at Bowindi National Park in Uganda. Four men have since been arrested on suspicion of poaching. Rafiki led the Karingo Gorilla Group for the past 12 years and had become a well-known individual to tourists visiting the park. Uh, one of the leading conservationists working to protect endangered mountain gorillas, whose name I cannot pronounce, says the corona panic has led to an upsurge of poaching in Bowindi National Park, which helped pave the way to Rafiki's death. So we can thank the economic lockdowns of the corona panic, you know, basically shutting down the tourism trade uh, to sub-Saharan Africa uh, and the firing of, uh, of all of the rangers and whatnot as poaching. Poachers just have absolute carte blanche at this point to kill whatever 
one of our fellow Earthlings, including the beloved Rafiki, the silver-backed gorilla. So anybody supporting the economic lockdowns from the corona panic, you have some gorilla blood on your conscience. But uh, anyway, we're going to wrap it up there because it is a rainy day at Bugs in a Jar Farm and I need to go uh, Jackson Pollock the bathroom. <clears throat> so if you enjoyed this uh, little weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant, please take a moment to vote this up if you did not enjoy my smart ass comments about the corona panic not one of which I apologize for. Uh, thumb it down and put your little mask back on and go cower in your closet. But we have things to do here on Bugs in a Jar Farm. Come see us at Bugs in a Jar. Leave the mask at home. Bye guys. Yes, dude. Rant is over. You can go back to bed now.